Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here on my channel. If this is the first video you're seeing from me, my name is Bia and I'm a Portuguese illustrator. I like to draw and make cute things and I have a shop online where I sell like stationery. Last year I started to make socks and since then you guys have been doing a lot of questions. I've been meaning to film a tutorial for a while now but I wanted to film when I was ready and I thought the product was really perfected and I think now it's the right time to film it so yeah welcome to a tutorial of how i make my socks first things first let me explain what is sublimation or at least try i'm not an expert <laughs> Sublimation is the technique that I use for making products like mouse mats, sock coasters, all of that. Basically the sublimation inks activate when they are heated and they adhere to certain surfaces. For fabrics uh, it works best and it's advised to use polyester fabrics because it adheres a lot better to it. I can't really explain a lot more about the technique, I'll try to insert a more well-explained definition of it. I have to use a printer converted to sublimation where I only use sublimation inks, then I'll print it out and when uh, I put them in the press with stabilized heat, they will adhere to certain materials and surfaces. First things first, the printer that I use is the Epson ET2711. This is an eco tank printer and I converted it to a sublimation printer, so I only put sublimation inks in it. It's a lot, lot easier to uh, add the inks in there, um, otherwise you'll have to use um, cartridges that you could open and put the sublimation ink because you can't really buy cartridges with sublimation ink on them. So yeah, this will make your life a lot easier if you are trying to invest um, and if you are going to buy a printer specifically for sublimation that will help a lot. Then the inks I bought them from Amazon and please be really careful about this because I would ha I had to clean my whole printer up after putting the wrong inks in it. I bought uh, accidentally normal inks and not sublimation but I was actually searching for sublimation inks but I don't know why Amazon suggested normal inks and I bought them and then only when I put the products in the press, I realized that I had put normal inks instead of sublimation inks. So when you are buying them, double check everything if they are sublimation inks, otherwise it won't work. I'm going to leave all the products that I'm mentioning in the description of the video so it will be easier for you to find everything that I'm mentioning. Um, to add the inks on the printer I got some syringes and I basically have them tagged for by color so I can use the same ones for each color and that's the way I basically put the um, inks on my printer. Regarding paper I know I'll probably have a lot of comments regarding this and every time I see sublimation videos there's all this um, talk about what kind of paper to use and all of that I use regular paper. Sorry about that <laughs> if you work with sublimation and if you think that's totally wrong I'm sorry about that but I started by trying out some sublimation paper that I'm also going to leave in the description if you want to use sublimation paper I'm going to leave the one that I use it was really good but it was really expensive and then I did some tryouts with normal printing paper and I really didn't see the difference at least for the products that I use and for the socks you can't see a difference. I did the tests and yeah it works for me so yeah <laughs> that's what I'm going to mention here on the video because I'm just going to say things that I use. Then for the socks as I mentioned uh, I use 100% polyester sock. You can try to use cotton, there are some sprays that I think you can add to it uh, so that it will adhere to cotton but um, polyester will work a lot better for like the molds. I'm not sure how to call them. I did some cutouts in cardboard and that's what I use. I've been seeing some for sale on Etsy and on Amazon um, in metal but I'm a little afraid of using them because metal really eats up on the press um, and these ones work so far really good for me. This is basically to so that the socks when they press are stretched up uh, but not too stretched out and the last thing that I use is the press. This was the investment that I did when I bought the printer, the inks and all of that. You have to use a press to use for sublimation. It has to be a press that you control can control eating, the timer and the pressure so it doesn't really work like a high urine or something like that. It really has to be something that can control all of these things. 
let's go on with the video and let me show you how exactly I make them. I have my file over here, as you can see, I mount everything on Photoshop. I have my, my guidelines in here and I normally add a pattern and I try that it doesn't pass like this lines and this lines and I'll show you later when I do the socks why. That it's basically for the design not to get cut when I'm pressing them so that when I press both sides they will kind of match up um, and I only have like a plain color or something uh, between the the two different sides of the sock and not a uh, cut out uh, pattern or illustration. Then when I have all of the files uh, ready like this, I click print. I already have more or less my print settings here and then you have to be careful to click on mirror image and the best uh, settings that work for me at least the premium presentation paper matte or matte paper in high quality settings and, and I also get a lot of, lot of questions about the ICC profiles the profiles that come with a printer good for me and the colors work out really well so let me print out the designs that I need right now while the files are pressing, I normally come here and I turn on the heat press because at least this model, it still takes a little while to eat it up. And for the socks, I eat it up at 200 degrees Celsius and I will be pressing for 80 seconds on each side. The second thing I do when I'm getting ready to sublimate products is to open the windows. When I started sublimating, I didn't hear a lot of people talking about this and I actually thought there was something wrong with my press and with my products. The smell, it's so, so strong. Try to ventilate your rooms a little um, or if you can't really ventilate, if you don't have any windows available, try to wear a mask or something because yeah, I never heard anyone talk about this, but I'm pretty sure it's not really good to your health. Okay, now let's get the materials ready for start sublimating. Here are the cardboard cutouts that I mentioned before. I'm going to start putting the socks here. So let's do that. In here I try to align them as best as I can so they will be nice and straight. They are done. I actually forgot to mention this on the materials, but it's also really important. This is a heat um, protected tape, so it doesn't melt or anything onto your materials. So that's what I use to place the, um, the print on the materials so they don't move when I put the press on top. Okay, now that we printed the drawings um, like this, when I put my sock in, they will be like inside the drawing so when i flip it over it doesn't get anything cut or anything like i mentioned before and the same with this one i'm going to put same tape to tip don't reuse the tape i used to do that so i could save the tape and not put so much in the trash but i was actually um, ruining a lot of socks the ink will uh, go onto the tape when you put them on the press and if you put a little bit of tape that has a little bit of ink in top of the white sock um, the ink that has been there before from the previous press will go onto the the fabric now i just put um like sheet on top i'm going to flip it over because the print uh, paper where you have the print it's the part that has to be on top you put them in the press so I have to put them in a press like this. Please be very careful when putting them on the press because it's really, really hot. I also always put an extra piece on like below to protect it even more. Then we add our socks and I add another piece on top as well. And now we press and we click this and it will start the countdown. And now we just wait. Yay! 
if you find really hard to grab them while they were hot and leave in the press, try to get some heat resistant gloves. These were life saving, especially for mugs and for socks because they are really, really warm when they get out of the press. So please be careful with that. Okay, these are done. Let's take the tape out. Now this is one of the most important phases and the ones that I get more questions, it's how not to get white seams on the sides of it. So let me show you. Okay, so right now we have the design on this side and this side it's white. And you can see if I just press on this side, the um, like the sides will be white because it will be on this side of the cardboard and it has some thickness so the ink won't get there so what I do is I flip them on the white side and I flip like a little bit over the other side and you see it will be I think it will be easier to explain with colored socks so I'll show you but you can see in here that the design it's coming onto the, um, like this side over here and I'll do the same on this side so I just twist it over a little and this time when I press here on this side it will get connected to the color that it comes off in here that we pushed a little bit to this side and don't forget to do the same down below instead of getting that white border it will come off a little bit on top of the color right here and you can you'll be able to see a little line still but it's better than to see a white um one i have these pastry ones right here as an example so let me show you what I mean. So you can still see the seam um, in here, but the color gets on top of each other when you do the little thing for the side. And um, it's nicer to have like the kind of line with color than to have it white. Yeah, that's what I do on this face. I hope it helps. <laughs> and now we repeat the same thing for this one. I just try to twist it, twist it a little bit, not too much but just a little bit so we won't get the white border thing then i'll just flip them over and since i put this one um down below i just try to match them as best as i can on the line so they won't get crooked or something and we put more tape Regarding the tape, I always try to put them here down below and one in here so they won't move place. We do the same process, we put the sheet of paper on top them over so that the press side will be up on the press and I press them for another 80 seconds. And they are done, so we can take them out of the cardboard thing. And this is the final result. Yay, they look so cute. And now I'm going to do the same for these other two designs. Let's make them. They are done! So we have Rocky, we have the Positivity, and we have the witchy ones. We did our sock, yay! <laughs> And 
and that is it for this video i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i hope it helps if you are thinking about going into sublimation or if you already have all the materials but you want to start with socks so yeah i really hope it helps if you have any questions please leave them down below in the comments and i'll try my best to answer them regarding the techniques the materials everything that you feel a little bit that was more confusing or something um, more than happy to help if you enjoyed this video please subscribe to my channel and consider supporting me on patreon so i can keep creating tutorials like this and helping you guys out i really hope this video helps and that you enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next one bye bye